Well, there's no denying it, Hertzman Zoo Castle is a stunning, impressive looking building. It really is an architectural gem. It's nearly 700 years old and it still looks like it's in pristine condition. Today it's part of Queen's University in Canada and students from all over the world come here to study. But its story is one of great survival. This is a building lucky to still be standing. Hersman Zoo may look like a fortress designed to hold back an army, but it isn't. Look a bit closer and you might spot a few problems. It's made of brick and has big windows, neither of which are much use against cannons or siege catapults. And that's because Hersman Zoo was never meant to be a fortress. The castle was built in 1441 by a wealthy nobleman, Sir Roger Fiennes. Not only did he want a home that would impress, but it also had to reflect his taste and his status. <laughs> he not only made this absolutely huge, but he decided to build it out of brick, which was really unusual because back in Britain at that time, nobody else was building in brick. So you could say this is the finest build of its kind since the Romans left a thousand years earlier. However, few people in the country really knew how to build with brick. So Sir Roger had to bring in specialist brickmakers and builders from Belgium. That brought the cost of this ambitious project to over £1 billion in today's money. It was a huge success. Trend-setting Roger made brick building fashionable. The size and the style of the castle put Hertzman Sioux on the map and inspired the design of other buildings around the country. For the next couple of centuries, life for the castle and its owners ticked along fairly smoothly. Running a castle like this was probably enough of a task. By the 1600s, the family name changed by marriage to Leonard. And these accounts from the period give a fascinating insight into what life was like in the castle and how the castle ran its financial affairs. And just reading what they ate gives you an idea of how well they lived. Apart from the obvious things we've got here like pork and mutton and beef. They liked rabbits, they liked squirrel, they liked blackbird, lark, pigeon. It's lobster, crab, mullet, bass. And it even says here maids, ursus and withies, whatever they are. And incidentally, there's a beer quota here for every single person, including children, of eight gallons of beer per week. Now, to be frank with you, I think the beer would be a lot healthier to drink than the water back in the day. Running a castle was an expensive business and this just goes to show how detailed and careful they had to be. They kept a watch on every single penny. And believe me, these are just a few pages from hundreds that exist in the castle's archive. Unfortunately, the cost of lavish living in such a grand castle became too much for the family. And by the 18th century, it had to be sold off. This was bad news for Hersman Zoo. Over the next 60 years, the castle passed between different owners, slowly becoming more and more neglected. And in 1776, all the contents of the castle were sold off. Fixtures, fittings, fireplaces, everything. The sale lasted three days and the eager buyers camped out on the front lawns. Now that's the type of dedication to auctions we love to see on Floggit, but the worst was still to come. The owners of the castle demolished all the interior walls. All that was left were these outer walls of Hertzman Sioux Castle. It literally was a shell. A once grand and glorious home was now left as a ruin. Over the next century, the ivy crept in and virtually swallowed the ruins. The elegant gardens became overgrown and the once great castle became a quaint Victorian tourist attraction. But it wasn't all over for Hersman Sioux. There was a knight in shining armour ready to rescue this castle in distress. It was bought in 1911 by Lieutenant Colonel Lowther. He was determined to return it to its former glory. Over the next 18 years he set about rebuilding the castle brick by brick. From just a desolate ruin, he gradually restored the interior of the building. And then the ivy was stripped away and the gardens returned to their former Elizabethan elegance. He did an amazing job when you bear in mind that all he bought was a shell of a building. The detail is fantastic. He fitted out the interior with fine stone and woodwork, most of it from other historic houses across England. 
Most impressive has to be this very grand oak staircase, said to come from a house in Hertfordshire built for a visit for Queen Elizabeth I. Now, sadly, Lowther died in 1929 when the restoration of Hertzman's Zoo was nearly there, but not quite complete. The challenge of completing Hurstman Sioux Castle was taken on by Sir Paul Latham in 1932. Lavishing a staggering £60 million in today's money, he finished off the restoration and put Hurstman Sioux back on the map, attracting the rich and the famous. Robert Shank's father was the farm manager at the time and they lived on the estate. Robert, so did you know the castle as a child? Did you get to know it? Yes, we did. We, it was on our do doorstep and uh, it was only open to the public one day a year. But as children, we used to sneak over the fence and have a look at it. And when you saw the scale of it and all the ramparts and things, as a nine-year-old, you had to be impressed with it. And you've got some memorabilia? Yes, I have. It. I've got a visitor's book of the castle. I would imagine there are some very important names in this Well, the one that I think I would go to first here we have King George V, Mary, and we have the future King George VI and Elizabeth all on one page. That's quite incredible, isn't it? Fashion people like Beaton. Alexander Haig, look at that. The aircraft designer and builder Sopwith. Even the Rothschilds turned up too. Yes. Look at that, Victor Rothschilds there, look. That, that's quite a scribble for such a it rich is, man. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's a pity it's not on a cheque, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's a who's who, isn't it, of the day, basically? That yes, it is. It really yeah. is. And that's a wonderful, valuable document of social history. It really is, isn't it? It's not just yeah. a book, but it's got names, dates and places all connected to this fabulous castle. Yes, I mean, I mean, That's so precious. Mm. Yes. Sadly, those heady days of Sir Latham and his famous guests didn't last long. He sold off the castle after the Second World War and it passed through various owners until it became what it is today, a very unique campus for Queen's University in Canada. Today, students walk the corridors and study in the rooms of Hersman Zoo, the latest inhabitants of this grand old building. For a castle that was never meant to be a stronghold, it's taken all that 700 years of history can throw at it, and it survived incredibly well. And looking at it now, who's to say it's not going to be around for another 700 years? <laughs>